G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my studio. Well, I'm gonna do a different but an effective painting today just with one brush, a filbert brush. So I suppose I might call this a filbert painting. Now it's gonna be a layout that any beginner can grasp and put this layout onto your canvas and create a beautiful piece of art. This size of my canvas was up there and the colors are also going up the screen as well as you would see. Now, when I do the trees as example, or the river, or another tree foreground, they're the subjects, there's what's added into this tutorial. I want you to understand that you can make that your own. Detail the trees with shadows and detail the way you want from this tutorial. You don't have to paint it the way I'm painting it here, but this is just a way you can lay out a painting. Get on over here and I wanna show you what I'm gonna lay out on the canvas, all right? Okay. I've got a landscape layout, which is that way. Those who don't know a portrait's upright, landscape's laying down. I've got my horizon line right about there, straight across, boom, boom, boom. It's not on an angle anywhere, okay? That's one simple method. And I've got a bit of foreground coming under that and up, coming for the side of the river. Now this side of the river, if anything, don't have it too much down. If anything, try and keep it a bit level. And we're gonna have some shrubs here, another bank over here, some more shrubs, and another bank here that's gonna create the river. I will give this a bit of detail there. And I'm gonna have a beautiful sun setting, yellow, orangey, purple colors in the sky. And I wanna show you how you can do that. And we're gonna do it all with one brush, a filbert brush. Now I have some colors here for me sky. I've got cad yellow medium, it's a bit warm. I've got some magenta, quinacridone magenta, got some titanium white and some French ultramarine blue. Now I'm gonna start with the filbert brush and the cadmium yellow medium. I've got nothing on my canvas. This is gonna be a basic, simple painting you can do without all the extra additives that a lot of beginners do not have. So I'm picking up the cadmium yellow. I wanna get this in the horizon. So I'll just paint it in there right across my horizons there. I'm gonna paint around all this stuff. I don't have to paint the whole sky for half and try and get over it. Now, I wanna get this. I'm picking up a little bit of white. Let's just see what white does to that. There we go. Makes it more opaque. Those who don't know what opaque is, because I didn't know what opaque was until I knew what it was, it means it makes it more thick. Okay, there's me yellow. Now I'm gonna pull it up there. Now I've got my quinacridone magenta. I want to pull some of that into my filbert and then start adding this white in there just to get it very, very pale. And I'm going to come across the sky again, all the way across here, right across the sky. Get it on. Now this is an A4 size canvas here, by normally the half the size that I normally do. This is a good size for you beginners to practice on. You don't need to practice on a big A3 or larger. Now what I'm doing, I'm pushing that over the yellow and I'm blending the two together, scumbling them, scrumbling them, pushing them together, merging them together just like that. Okay, and making sure I'm coming right across the sky there. And every now and then when I do this procedure, I like to put these kind of pull downs into the bottom color, even though you can't see them, I've done that behavior with my brush stroke. Now, before I contaminated that paint, I'm gonna grab a bit more again and just grab the magenta and the white on its own so I don't get that yellow in it. All on the filbert brush. I'm just making a more darker vibe of that color just to get a little bit more before I put the blue in there. And this is acrylic. Yeah, that's a nice. I'm painting it onto that level there. I'm not worried about getting up here and bringing it down because the blue is gonna come there. I just wanna make sure this will scrumble into that previous color I just put on there decent enough. Okay. I'm gonna just get a, a pocket of this maybe up there, just like that, a bit uneven. There we go, beautiful. All right, I wanna pull some blue into some white over here. This is the, get a bit more for that because I'm gonna need a lot more volume. This is the French ultramarine blue and I've got a little bit of white in it just to give it that pale, it gives it a sort of a purpley color, it'll match that there. And I wanna 
crisscross this, get it to that color there, get it to there, get it to there, and then over here as well. And then I'm gonna start merging that together as well, just so they're soft. Don't worry about up here later, do that later when you're not concentrating on merging and marrying colors. Get a bit there, right through there. Look at that, like I did that explanation there. There it goes there, it's right in there. Pushing it through the bottom now. I can see a little bit of that X stroke. I shouldn't have done that, but there, we'll get rid of it. Okay, I'm gonna grab the French and darken that pile up. I need a bit more volume, just about that much there. And I wanna darken that up now with the French. If you don't have magenta, uh, ultramarine, and the CADs, the yellow CADs, do yourself a favor and get them, and also the yellow oxide as well. That's an important color to have in your arsenal. And I'm gonna do the same again. I'm gonna crisscross this close enough to that bottom color. Okay, just like so, and I wanna merge it. Now it's up to you how nature fireball or neat you merge these together. You can even leave it brush strokey if you want. Pick up some more. From there, and then I'm coming down to it. That easy, you can do it. Coming down to that color. And merge them again. Up here. Raw canvas, dry. It's been gesso primed from the factory, so I put nothing on it myself. I like to use a good quality canvas cloth when I paint. I know I'm gonna be painting for a while, so it pays to get good stuff. Now I can just concentrate on blocking the rest of that sky in. I've just pulled a bit more of the blue in, just to give it a little bit more darker. Enough to get the top in, there you go, you can see the difference. And we've laid that sky in so many ways. At the end of the painting, if you never saw how to do it, as a beginner, you could probably ask yourself, how do you get a sky like that? Well, knowing what to do, and then giving it some practice, I guarantee you, you can do it. And just pushing it on any old way. Now I just want to finesse the sky with my brush strokes or with the filbert brush, look at this. So I'm just picking up some white on the filbert brush there. I've given it a good clean and I'll probably, let's see if we can get something here. I'll put it on and I'm just gonna stamp around there like I use a pouncer, right? I'm gonna stop and wipe that brush because I can't do nothing with that with it full of gunk like that. So I'm just gonna wipe it, come with the tip of it and let's just see if I can get left and right lineal lines on there. I'm liking that because I find those lines give you depth at times within your artwork. Now grabbing that white and the, the French over here, a little bit of magenta, not too much. Because these are gonna be just some clouds down the bottom silhouetted. So I'm just trying to find that right vibe and I think I've got it. It's kind of, with that magenta in it, you can sort of see that lilac-y color. I just simply wanna caress this here. The, the sky is wet. You know how I do my filbert trees? Well, I'm gonna do that with these silhouette clouds. A big bubbly one there. The, let's see if I use my finger. They're not quite silhouette-y. So I'll stamp it on a bit more. Right down, you don't need anything fading away to the atmosphere because like I said, they're in silhouette. And I want something popping up here. There we go, I've got my cloud there. And probably just something here. Get a bit more on the brush. I wanna try and get a tail, there we go. 
and just something there that will sit behind the trees. Now this is looking a bit green here. I'm going to darken it up now. These aren't realistic looking clouds. I mean, they will suit the painting, but how I've done my normal clouds with the yumminess and the weather in them and that, these are totally different clouds. Or well, you don't even have to put these in your rendition if you don't want to. Now, I've given it a dry, and if you don't like that yellow bit the way I've got it there, I've given it a dry and I'm just going to darken it up a bit more now. You'll just see what happens. And this is obviously probably give you an opportunity to make this act like a bit of yumminess, but you don't really need these details because they're in silhouette. The sun's on the opposite side of them and they've just got that shadow vibe about them. And I'm going to try and do all this whole painting with this one filbert brush. There we go. I'm happy with that. I better do it on camera, otherwise someone might crucify me. I've just dabbed some white in the brush there. I'm just, because I looked at it, it's a little bit heavy. So I'm just doing that. Just looked a bit too heavy and dark. Now the next simple thing is the horizon line. My horizon line is going to be about the top of this tape there, okay? So I'm going to put that there, straight across. I've given the canvas a dry, so I'm not going to ruin the paint. And I'll get some of those sky colours now, just down into the water, picking up the yellow with a touch of white, not too much white, just a little bit of white. And I don't want too much on my brush either because I just want a, a subtle bit there. And just in the river area, nowhere else, just in the river area, I can see where my river's going to be. So I want some of that there. Now, grabbing the magenta with what's in my brush. Bit of white. Don't go too crazy. And getting it about here and then scrambling that together in the water as well. Now get those colors merging together like so. Get right to the bank's edge. Okay, now I'm going to do mainly the blue. I'm just simply going to grab the white again with a bit of French ultramarine. Get it to that other colour and then just start scrumbling and merging it together. There we go, I'm happy with that. It's going to be a little different vibe of the sky, but it's going to be enough to show the sky's reflections. I'm bringing it down and then I'm just going to make the very bottom there by adding more blue to that mix on my palette down here just to get this half a little bit darker as you can see. And that's enough footprint of the river to be covered up with land. And now I'll scramble that. Now it's up to you how detailed you make this water at the end of the painting. You nearly took that tape off ink and we watch you do it. Yeah, all right. There we go. Now, so those beginners who think they might be getting lost, I've just gone and outlaid my lines back in there. Now, if you have trouble doing this, I will put a traceable for this actual layout. I'll make a traceable for all this and that'll be in the traceable link in the description below. So go there and get the traceable for this. Now, I've just done this here. Now, we're going to start blocking in the back and bringing it forward. I've got my river laid in. Hopefully, I'm just looking at it. It's looking reasonably perspectified. <laughs> Now I've got me burn umber, I've got green oxide and I've got viridian green. I want to pick up the burn umber and just block in the ground area with a dark block in colour, okay? I'm going to use this colour here. I want to come below the horizon there, see how I've done that? That's the top of the field there. And just simply block this in on a swooping, waving motion. I've dried the canvas I'm going to grab my bullshit stick just so I can get that horizon line pretty level with my brush and I want to come right across. Now this is coming across and it's going to just touch there. Okay, 
So in hindsight, we've got a scattered horizon line. And I'm only going to put this where I want the ground. I'll do the trees later. So I want to get that nice and straight there. Look at this stick. It really helps me get a nice straight line there. And that's bullshit how straight it makes it, isn't it, eh? River's edge there. Coming there. Coming there. Once this colour is on, I will dry it. So when I'm adding the actual grass colours on there, it will not mud up and pull. This is just the blocking in colour. Now, I've added another green down here, which is sap green. I'm going to wet my brush, get a bit of a, not too much, a little bit of a damp puddle and start dragging that into my damp puddle. And I just want to block in now my over that brown that I just put on there with this and then highlight it appropriately. Yeah, it's reasonably dark. I'm using this green here because I do want it to be a different value to my shrubs that I'm going to put there. So I'm just blocking that on there. So this is pretty much, you can leave little bits of dirt showing behind, but it doesn't matter if you cover it all up. At least it's just not going on white. It's going on something more dark and solid. And I'll do the same on the other side. Now th this side here, is, I'm going to have, I'm, I'm going to do some shrubs with a fill, but just to break it up to make that bank look like it's going that way instead of running down the painting. It'll be a visual effect to give it the perspective it's going to need. And I'm just going to stroke this in reasonably quick. I'm just doing it quick because I'm filming and I don't want to spend a month of Sundays on one video file. And there's, there is a little bit of brown under there. That's okay. Done as well. Now I'm thinking just to break up the highlights for that sap green, I'm going to go for, I've got yellow green here, so I'm going to use that just to highlight those, that green field. So I'll grab the forest of the yellow green and I want to simply come across here and just dance in some highlighted green. Just here and there. Leave lots of that first colour you just put there. Just scratch it through like that. We're going to have shrubs up there hiding all that, so don't worry about that. Okay, this side here. I'll put a little bit of the um, sap into this colour. I just want to push that foreground back, just scratchingly. And then, like I said, the edge of this is going to have shrubs there, so I'm not too fussed how the edge of this gets. But I'll at least get it there. And if anything, I want this stuff sort of coming down and coming down like so, just like that, creating different banks and lays of that there. Join that line into those pull-off scratch highlight bits as well. And you're just going backwards and forwards with this, highlighting it, adding dark bits here and there where you feel you might need them. There's bits of dirt under there. Because I want this green, I'm just simply using these greens to be different to the shrubs. I'm just pulling some of that cad yellow light medium that I had on there. Let's just see, I've just rubbed that through the yellow green here just to see if I can get some highlighted patches there within that grass there. There we go. Just something up there. There's that bank I'm trying to create. This over here, just with that had yellow medium mix with the yellow green but it's going to have to be dry before I do that that's very wet that'll do just to give this river a bit of life before I go to the next bit I've just mixed up some of the French ultramarine and the 
magenta just to get this vibe here because I want to get just some darkness here before I put the detail in front of it. So I'll get this here so I don't have to paint around it later. But you want this coming in the river left and right, not up and down, okay? Just bits of darkness here and there I want. This is basic. It's up to you how technical you make yours look. I'm just showing you the fundamentals of what you can do getting this river looking. Now I've given this a dry and I want to start putting these mid-ground trees in now with my filbert brush. Now down on my palette I've got the green oxide, I've got the viridian green and I've got perylene green. Perylene green, look out, it looks black but I want to use this just to map in the actual shape of my bushes up there so I can get the colours sitting on a dark background. Now I'll start from here. This field is on the around the back of these trees. I've got a bit of yellow paint there, so I've got to cover that up. So these trees are going to be my filbert trees, and they're going to come up like so. Now don't have your paint too wet, because you'll see end up seeing right through it. And try and get the edges of these nice and open and hairy like a filbert tree would look. I love my filbert brush for filbert trees. And then we can simply block this in like so with all this dark colour. Now I might have to, see how it, you can see pull marks in all the brush strokes? I might have to darken, not darken it, I might have to dry it just so as I can give it another coat maybe. Now I want this to come down over the grass. Let's do this. But I don't want it straight. If it's straight, it's going to look a bit weird. The bottom can be a little bit curved. So I'm going to kind of curvulate the bottom here. What does curvulate mean, Ian? That's just a word I made up. It's just curving it. Yeah, right, eh? And this one here can kind of come down there. Same over here. Now, I want this right on the tip there. Touching that grass that I put there. There we go. Hopefully my camera's picking this up. And the very tops, I want, I'm just getting the tops where I can create the air within them. There we go. And then bring this down to that grass land that we built before as well, painted in there. Come out a little bit, see? I'm not just gonna go up like that. I like to break it up a bit. Break it up a bit. And we'll stop there. I want this coming from about here and back that way. So it's like it's coming towards us. It's just not a flat row of trees on the horizon there. Look at some of your early art, you beginners, and if you feel you've got a flat row of trees or a flat row of anything in your background, work on not doing that in your future projects, okay? Because it helps you evolve. Now I'm gonna to have to dry this. I'll do it off camera, I'll dry it and I'll give it a second coat. Just along the bank here, from about here, I'll go small and come bigger as I come closer. I just want some of this dribbling down close to the water's edge, just like some kind of tight little bush and shrubs near the water's edge there. I'm just using the filbert brush to create these little, I don't know, foliage shapes. Come right off the painting there. It's something just so it looks like it's coming towards us instead of sideways. And I want to just create this. I want something a bit hanging over there. There we go. And we've got some shrubs along the bank of the river here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply grab the Viridian Green, but I'm going to see if I can would that help it or hinder it? This might work because it's got white in it. So I'm pretty much getting a darker version of my green oxide using the Viridian Green. Now I just want to simply block in over that perylene we put here using my filbert brush and start getting these trees in. So I'm going to come beyond that black. Yeah, that's better. And try and if you've looked at trees like I've told you in the past to do, you might get an idea of 
how shadows lay and stuff like that. So I'm going to leave that black bit there and I want this coming right in front. Leave that darkness there, don't kill it all. And you can see this is a different value green than the foreground. And same over here. Just getting it dribbling over our field there, our lawn. Now this here, I want to try and, see I've deliberately put a little bit there, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I want to try and create this as one bush coming down, like so, with, with swaying bits and bobs within the top side of it, it's just so it's looking filberty and tree-like, very basic and simple to do and also making sure you leave the bottom darks there. And then this bit here, we've created another one further back, just so it doesn't look like a single row of trees at the back of your painting, okay? Our highlights will help distinguish that. And simply here, I wanna do just the top. I've gotta to leave a lot of the dark where it's hitting the water there. So I'm doing just the top and dribbling down a very little bit. Now grab a filbert brush, just grab a bit of paper cardboard, put any color on it and just practice doing these brush strokes. Practice brush strokes if you haven't done them before and you can see them in a tutorial that you feel you might want to do, Go ahead and practice those strokes. So not many of us think to do that, do we? And I'd like to be the one to tell you, well, you start thinking of that. Now this dark I want on the left side of these trees. So I'll go that side cover. And if anything, this side here is gonna show the darker depth shadowy bit of these shrubs. And I've stamped them on in a way where I know I can taper like this. And this is just simple, effective subjects you can add into a painting, a landscape. And it's up to you how you evolve from there and what detail you put into it. I'm about here. I want to kind of just, where are we? I've got to get something going. I'll get it onto the, there now. I want to just kind of pull something down into the water so this side of the um, bank does not look floaty. getting something dark in the water. So I'm using the perylene green again, and I'll add those highlights gingerly as I go. I've given it a dry, I'm just grabbing this color here, just the very bottom edge of it, getting a, some bits of a pull down of that color, because I will grab some white just to add as water hitting that bank there to distinguish the two. Now, Using the green oxide, I'm picking that up in my filbert brush. Put this colour in here now. If anything, I'm coming this way and bowing it into the middle of the painting and the other side will go the opposite way. And when you get to the bottoms, you can also, where there's no middle ground green, you can also dribble some of this just on top of the shadow to give it that depth. I'll have a look at my monitor. That's okay. Now I'm just looking, you do not want black edges. They look a bit wrong, I feel. Now I want to bring this down like I did before, leaving a lot of darker areas within it still, but giving the general shape coming down here, in front of there. See, if I didn't have that dark there, this would not sit right and it'll look a bit weird and a bit wrong. See, I've gone beyond the edge.
the very top same fashion come down a little bit but less of see these are nice smaller brush strokes those ones over there I got carried away and just pressed too heavy and the same here feed it out into your shadow I'm just grabbing some of this and getting some gingerly uh, highlighted reflections in this water bit as well. Now just to help me with that, I'm going to grab some glaze and white just to put a, get a bit of a film on this water. So I've got my brush I'm going to use, I'll get the amount of white that I feel I want on it. I don't need much. Come to the glaze here. And I want to oh, glaze some of this up. And I'll use my bullshit stick and just probably finding the edge there. Just want to come along the water left and right and put scallops just like that. Coming along again, I'll see if I can get a line there, but nothing too. Thick, I want to be able to see my reflections that I put there, pulling it back. And this will dry subtly, it won't be big and loud and white, it'll be nice and subtle. You need subtleness, don't you, Ian? A lot of subtleness goes well in a painting. Yeah, and I always try and tell people. that. I'm going to just put a simple tree filling out this area here just by grabbing the burnt umber and simply blocking a simple trunk. It's up to you how you detail this trunk. So we'll sit him on the ground about here. So there's the ground. Look at the ground. The ground, if I can get my hand bent around here, the, the ground is arched. There we go. And now tree's going to be coming up here and something holding it out over the sky there now that's me trunk so to speak there you go and let me look at the bottom there the bottom needs something a little bit more here just to give it some round there we go now I'm just going to turn the camera off and block that in so I don't bore the living buggery out of you. Now I've picked up some of the cadmium yellow medium and I'm just trying to get a bit of a lighter value of that, a timber colour. So I'll just kind of, I'll let it be scratchy and that it's bark, it's Bark can do that. If anything, I suppose I'm coming on this side because that's where the um, uh, the sun is. It's shining on that side. And just kind of, I don't know, play with it. Now later on, I might stand back, analyse it, have a look and just see if it needs some darkness scattered within it. If it does, I'll, I'll filter it through there. You might see that go on on camera or you might not. But if you don't, don't lose sleep out of it, over it, okay? Yeah, look at that. It's added more dimension. Just so as the detail police don't lose any sleep, I'm going to, I've picked up some darker colour, which is just the burn number and a bit of black, and I'm just going to kind of put some shadow values within this, because when those detail police come out, they like to give full reviews on everything so I don't know I'll try and darken some of this up in there simple tree I want to make use of this green oxide up the real billowy one now I'm looking at that that looks very watery is that that's obviously the paint doing that I don't want it being too watery and I want a bit of a 
dip there and something coming out here and we'll come out here sort of swooping down don't destroy all your beautiful uh, sunset colors there try and be aware of that when you do something like this now that's looking a bit flat and over I'm not liking that look so I want to try and um, get this down a bit uh, where else can I try and do that a bit down here and I'll fill it out a bit more here I've dried that and given it another coat. Now I want to grab some of this sap green that I have and use that as the dark color. So that color I just put on there is the medium. Blocked it in in the medium. I'm going to pick up this color for the dark and if it's not dark enough I can add a bit of the black or the perylene to it. Just so I can look at this, I want the bottom half dark. So I'm going to go around that trunk there. Get the bottom half of all this dark, just like so, and filter it around. Where's that paint? Come beyond the trunk, down there again. So it looks like the trunk is not on the side of the tree. It's the way it should be. And we're just getting darks here. Something there. Now I'll grab that, I'll dry this and I'll grab that green oxide with a little bit of white now just to add the highlighted colour. So I've got my white, I want about that much paint so I'm going to grab that and start mixing it till it becomes the shade that I'm after and I can always sit it next to that colour there just to see how much lighter it is. And I want to taper this into the, the first colour I put on leaving some of those darks there and then look at this I'll surround that dark leaving some of the first green I put there as well and that first color you might have to it doesn't mean you've done something wrong if you have to you might have to come back and taper some of that back through it as well just to give it those vibes of greatness now with the bottom shadow you do want to make sure, where are we, where are we, yeah that's good, you just want to come above that, come above it, taper down a little bit, taper down a little bit, that's it, not too much. I want to have a look at my monitor and just have a look at that. Yeah, I'm, so I might need some of the other colours just to come backwards and forwards. So I'm grabbing the first colour, green oxide, let me look in my monitor there and see where I can go. I feel maybe a bit too much here bring this to some of the darks and it's just going backwards and forwards that blobby stuff I put up there I'll lighten that up a bit Come. I've just grabbed some of that sap green in my brush scratching some kind of distorted shadow from of my tree there okay and he can just come right off the painting if you want it to there and distort it out there. I'm just going to sign this then we'll take the tape off and reveal our painting and I also want to thank my YouTube channel members and my patrons who support me every month for the price of a cup of coffee. Much appreciated. I try to encourage other people to support me as well to keep my channel going longer and further than it can do. Now don't forget Steve's footprint. No, there we go. There we go, that's not too shabby. You've got a simple subject matter to create on your canvas. Now be sure we keep this area here open for the visuals of the sun going down. You've got these here. This little bit might have been covered up a bit too much. Keep an opening here when you're doing your layout. 
I don't like this hump. That could have been a bit more real looking, but it is what it is. I'm only human. But all in all, it's not too bad, and I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. That was quite simple and effective in acrylic. I hope you like what I'm doing, and if you do, you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, have a look at this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.